This is a video that I've been looking forward to filming for so long. I am thrilled to be here and in my first year of being on YouTube this month as marks my year anniversary of being here doing YouTube at Sarah Eden's Financial. And so I wanted to share 10 top takeaways that I have kind of been thinking about sharing with you about if you're looking at using YouTube as either part of your business, part of your brand, or you just want to start something like a vlog and build a business around your YouTube channel, maybe some of both. For me, my YouTube channel is a big part of my business as a finance coach. But if you're looking at having YouTube as part of your business and as an income stream, here's 10 things that you need to know before you start your channel because it's really important. And I feel like as many videos as I watched and as many video, as, as many online courses as I signed up for and took before I started my channel, I didn't feel like people really mentioned this aspect of being on YouTube and it's extremely important. So stay tuned until the very end because you're not going to want to miss any of these tips. So number one is do not quit your day job. Okay, I think I need to like probably emphasize that more, but do not quit your day job. Don't think that YouTube will automatically go to being a income stream that will support you um, the same way that your day job is. It just doesn't work that way. Right now, YouTube requires channels to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of what they call watch time, which is just how many hours worth of time people have been watching your videos in the last, I think it's the year is the way they look at it. And so it's really important to know that before you reach those particular mile markers in your YouTube journey, you will be creating content completely for free. And in fact, it will be costing you money to create that content just because you have to perhaps upgrade your laptop if you don't have a laptop that's got editing software on it, um, or you have to purchase editing software. I know for me, I had to get a new Apple laptop when I started because then I could use iMovie for free, which is nice. Um, you have to to buy a camera if you're not going to use your iPhone, which I found that my vlogging camera was just a great investment. Um, you're looking at sound equipment, you're looking at lighting equipment. And so there's just a whole host of things that go into having your channel kind of be able to look nice and get your audio right and your visual right from the start. And so Anyway, while you're doing all that, obviously you're having to pay out of pocket for it. And it takes a while to get to that point where you get a thousand subscribers. I was looking at the data on this and what's really interesting is that there's just a very small percentage of YouTube channels that stick around long enough to get to a thousand subscribers. I'll come back to this in a minute. But it's very challenging to get to that first thousand subscribers. I haven't reached it myself yet. But my theory being that probably once you reach your first thousand, it's probably a lot easier because what I've seen is that the subscriber growth on my channel has been exponential. It took me about eight months to get my first hundred subscribers. And then just for example, last month alone, I had almost a hundred subscribers just last month in 30 days and what took eight months before. So it's just a lot that goes into it. But anyway, when you reach that thousand subscriber and 4,000 hours of watch time mile marker in your journey, then you can start utilizing income from what's called Google AdSense. So you get paid a portion of the advertising revenue on your channel. Um, and then also too, a lot of YouTubers get a lot of their income from brand deals. So doing some advertising for brands that either they contact or that reach out to them and be able to pitch that to their audience. And that's a very um, another big piece of the YouTube income pie. Some of it is the Google AdSense income. Some of it is from brand deals. And brands typically won't reach out to channels until you have 5,000 to 10,000 subscribers because they like to see those numbers in terms of that you've built a channel that's really um, got traction, that's got an engaged audience. And so they feel like you're going to be a good partner for what they do with their business and you can collaborate that way. So that's kind of the numbers that you're looking at before you're going to be making any money at all off of YouTube. And I feel like that's something that just does not get emphasized enough because you know, we see these content creators on YouTube and a lot of them too, what we forget 
is that many of them have been on for like eight to 10 years to build these big channels that they have. I so far haven't seen too many people who I follow. I, there's a handful of folks I follow who I've been subscribed to for a couple of years who have built million subscriber channels in you know under five years. But I would say that's definitely exception and not the rule. So it's just really good to just kind of be super realistic right out of the gate that your channel is not going to be an income stream acutely, but what you're doing is you're playing the long game by creating this great library of digital content that eventually when you start to monetize, YouTube will continue to show those videos over and over again later. And so you'll be making money off of the advertising revenue from those later. And so that's the nice thing is, you know, it's not like you're time and energy you're putting in is at all wasted, plus you're learning. And I've got to say, it's nice to learn on a small audience rather than a big audience. I think if I'd had to get up on front of, you know, multiple thousands of subscribers right off the bat, I would have been petrified um, because it just takes time. If you go back and look at some of my older videos from when I started, I didn't have my lighting sorted out. I didn't have my filming equipment sorted out. Um, my audio wasn't that great. My thumbnails weren't that great. And so you learn over time and it's much less stressful learning in front of a very small audience rather than a big one. So there's there's good things to starting out small and growing gradually over time. So that's the first thing is just don't quit your day job because if you need more income right now, you're better off going out and getting another part-time job, to be honest, or finding a way to get a raise at work rather than thinking YouTube is going to create that income. And I know right now in the cost of living crisis that we're in, we all need more income because everything's just costing so much more. So think of it as kind of a long game to more income for yourself, but not necessarily something that will happen overnight. Now, if it happens overnight for you, congratulations, because that's wonderful, but just don't count on it because it's not most people's experience. And then if it does happen, that's wonderful because you might have a topic that's just perfectly timed for what people are looking for or something else that's just really good timing wise. And so you're able to reach a broad audience right away. Um, so that would be great if that happens for you. I hope it does. The second thing to do and know and a lesson that I have from having gone through this myself over the last year is it's really important to find that sweet spot of picking a topic that you're interested in talking about a lot over years of your life, right? Because a lot of times if you're going to create a successful channel, you're going to be on here for years. And that's a good thing. But also that other people are interested in as well. And that's the challenge because I think a lot of YouTubers think, oh, you know, these. So I see small channels sometimes that they work really hard. They put out a lot of content that's quite high quality and they're posting on a regular consistent schedule. They're doing all the things but their topic is so niche that not too many people are interested in it. And so it's really important to find a topic that's interesting to enough other people that it's not just like the super small group of people that are interested in what you're also interested in. But it's a big group of people who are interested in that topic and also that you're interested in. And just finding that sweet spot, it's kind of like a Venn diagram of where is that happy place where you can hang out on your channel and you're not going to be bored or burn out talking about the topic and other people will also be interested whether that's um, helping people solve their problems or sharing kind of your own personal level up journey through say a vlog or something like that there's just so many different types of channels out there but just find something that you're interested enough in to talk about for a very long time because if you look at the big channels They've been around five, six, seven, you know, eight, ten years, and they haven't gotten tired of talking about their niche yet. So that's a super important point. The third lesson that I've learned from being on YouTube for a year is don't spending a lot of money up front. So this is also kind of again gets back around to how your channel will basically cost you money initially. But I would say the things that are worth spending on are, like I said, good camera good lighting, good sound equipment. I'll link in the description to the exact gear that I use that I've been really happy with um, over the last year that I've kind of played around with what I want to use. 
Right now I'm just editing with iMovie on my laptop and it's free. There's a lot of other editing software out there. But just find a way initially that it doesn't cost you a ton of money to do this. And then you will be able to obviously outsource stuff over time if you want to. You can outsource all of your video editing um, if you want to down the road. You can outsource your SEO or search engine optimization um, work. You can outsource that later rather than having to do that yourself. But in the beginning it will just be you. And the point is to not burn yourself out in the beginning. When you're there, you don't have a lot of people watching your videos, maybe you're not getting a lot of traction, and you're maybe starting to feel discouraged. You don't want to have just blown your budget and feel all burnt out at the same time because that's not going to be sustainable. And it's also really helpful too, before you spend a ton of money with your setup, with your background, with your lighting, with everything, um, you know, your YouTube filming studio that you're planning to use, it can be good to see do you like being on YouTube? Are you okay with being in front of a camera or do you hate it? You know, is it, it, it's one thing to think about starting a channel. It's another thing to get in front of the camera on a regular basis. And if that's not part of what makes you tick um, with being on camera, that may not even be a good fit for you. So it's really helpful before you spend a ton of money to just kind of do a test run start your channel, make some videos in the topic that you're interested in. Um, and even at that point, you know, don't worry a lot about how many subscribers you're getting or how many views you're getting. This is kind of an experiment for you to be able to learn and say like, how do I feel about this whole experience with YouTube? How do I feel about being out there on the internet? We'll talk more about how to manage some of the stressors that come with being on the internet as a content creator in a minute. But it's really important to just kind of see how you feel about the whole concept because you know when I started creating my own YouTube videos it totally changed the way I watched other people's YouTube videos because having been a creator then I was like oh I really like their lighting or I really like the way they said that or you know and now every time of course I watch YouTube videos it's like I'm just taking notes on what they're doing well um, especially on the big channels I subscribe to and thinking through oh I like that thumbnail art or I like the way they did this or that so it's just it completely changed is the way you approach YouTube as well. But just kind of don't spend too much money while you're testing the waters. And then if you love it, if it's working while you're getting traction with your audience um, that you want to reach, then by all means, upgrade your equipment. You can always spend more later, which is the bottom line versus having spent a lot. And maybe you decide it's not for you or it's not a great fit for your business or your brand and you want to move on and do something different. You haven't spent too much money before you do that. So that's kind of my advice on that one. My fourth lesson that I learned from this past year of being on YouTube is to decide how much you want to share about yourself and your life online. So this is very, very important because maybe you think, oh, you know, maybe you like to watch vlogs. And so you think, oh, well, I'll start a vlog. Wouldn't that be fun? And maybe you're a really private person and suddenly, you know, you shoot a couple of videos and upload them and you realize you don't like having your home online or you don't have like having your family members online. You don't or your family members don't want to be online for for that matter. You don't want to put your um, you, don't, you don't want to talk about yourself so much because you're a private person. So it's really good to think through what's the best type of channel for your personality if you are going to be on YouTube what's the best fit and find a way that you can be on the internet but still be comfortable so that you're not feeling like you're oversharing um, beyond what's comfortable for you because just like in-person relationships internet is also you know your your audience you build a relationship with your audience and with the people who watch your channel and so it's all about setting boundaries as well in terms of what's sustainable and comfortable for you. So just really think that through before you even pick what type of channel you are going to do, whether it's a vlog, maybe it's a travel channel, maybe you're looking at doing a teaching or how-to channel, maybe you're looking at doing something like what I have that's part of my business where you're doing a lot of education about a certain topic. So whatever it is that you're looking at, just kind of think through how you can make it comfortable for yourself to be in that online space because it's one thing to watch the YouTube videos other people make and some people are very comfortable with sharing every last detail about their lives and every last detail about themselves and they're very comfortable doing that. They're very extroverted. On the other hand, if you're super introverted, that might be your idea of you know hell basically. <laughs> so, so just really think through kind of what 
is going to be most comfortable for you before you go starting in a genre that you get into and maybe you even get a lot of subscribers, but then you end up hating it. So just really think that through as well. There's so many different types of channels out there that you can launch. So you can think about that. The fifth lesson that I learned from this year on YouTube is um, somehow it's still possible to get stage fright, even when you're just talking in your home office or in your YouTube studio to your camera. And this has been something that's been so interesting for me to observe about myself. You learn a lot about yourself as you're on YouTube, as you're in front of the camera. And if you haven't been in front of the camera much before, it can be really intimidating, just like staring down the lens and trying to think of what you're going to say. And I don't script my videos out. I have show notes that I use that you'll see see me glancing down at from time to time, but I don't have a teleprompter or anything that I'm reading because I just like to kind of be able to present this way. It's just what works for me, but some people will read their whole video off a teleprompter, um, but there's different ways to do it. And so, and of course it depends on which kind of niche you're in as well, but it's just really interesting. And that's something that has gotten better over the last year as I've been on camera. But I noticed the people who are honestly the most confident presenting on YouTube and confident in general on YouTube are honestly the, the um, news anchors. I have a couple of news anchors who also have YouTube channels who I follow and they are just like my rock stars because I always watch and see how they hold themselves, how they present themselves, how they speak um, because they have of training, professional training in being on camera and being on television. So I think that they're really good. If you want to look at some people who are really polished and really good, just go look up some channels that are done by news anchors and or former news anchors because they are just pros because they have years and years and years of both experience and professional training at being on camera. It's just not as easy as it looks. And you also might think that you can talk the same way when you're on YouTube as you can maybe to your friends. And the thing is, it's very different because obviously people are busy, so you don't want to maybe ramble on the same way you would if you're just having a conversation with a friend. The other thing, too, is that as soon as you start recording yourself, you'll realize how often you say, um, like... Ah, and, and things like that. And, and just all those verbal fillers, all those kind of verbal fillers that we don't really think about when we're having a regular conversation. But then all of a sudden, you start realizing how often you say these things. And so just being able to kind of realize that you do get more confident on camera as time goes on, you absolutely will. And the things get easier as you go is really reassuring just to know that you if you if you do experience some stage fright initially, it's okay. It's also about knowing that you're recording a video that obviously isn't live streaming, but will go out to an audience of perhaps a fairly large audience. And so it's easy to just kind of freeze up and forget what you were going to say. And that's fine. Remember too, you can always stop and come back. You can edit stuff out if it didn't come across quite right, or if you had to just sort of pause and collect your thoughts. I do that a lot. Um, and see, there we go. <laughs> I still say I'm after I've been on for a year, but you will absolutely get more comfortable with this as time goes on. And with practice, you will become a pro. So that's something to just keep in mind that I've learned as well over this year. The sixth thing I've learned is that don't let fear of negative comments stop you from launching your channel. I've got to say, I was terrified of this when I first started because I follow a lot of vloggers and I follow a lot of other channels who the... YouTubers talked a lot about the really negative comments that they would get. And so I was really kind of stressed out about this when I started my channel because I thought, well, I don't want to have to deal with all the negative comments. I don't want to have to deal with unpleasant or um, toxic people online because just like you can get unpleasant, toxic people in real life, they are definitely out there on the internet as well. And so that was something that was really worrying me. Now, I've got to say I am the luckiest YouTuber on YouTube because I have the best audience. I don't even know how I got so lucky, but my subscribers and the people who who leave me comments are so lovely. They are so complimentary. They are so kind, so encouraging. 
And a big shout out to all my subscribers. You all just are the best part of my job right now is to be able to read your comments and engage with you and be able to build this community that we're building. So I just want to say thank you for all your support and encouragement because that just means absolutely the world to me. So if you're looking at starting a channel as part of your business or a part to build an income stream for yourself, just keep that in mind that yes, there absolutely are unpleasant people out there, of course, but you will find your audience of lovely people who will love what you do and who will cheer you on in your endeavors as a YouTuber. So I just want you to keep that in mind as well. And also too, um, it's really important to remember that YouTube has excellent comment control features and blocking features. They have probably the best in the entire social media industry, even way better than Instagram, way better than TikTok, in my opinion, way better than Facebook. So what's really great about YouTube is they have an option where you can moderate your comments before they go live so that rather than having to go back through and pull stuff that's maybe unkind or unpleasant, then you can just delete it and get rid of it before it even goes live in your comments section. So you just keep in mind too, you have total control over what goes out there in your comments section. And also you can block users from your channel if you must, if they're really just being very aggressive or toxic or you're getting trolled, you have that as an option as well. And that's a great option. So there's just so many different things that YouTube gives to make being a content creator um, safe, sustainable, and something that's not going to ruin your mental health. Because I think a lot of times those toxic comments can really damage people's mental health. Absolutely. But it's also about how much do you tolerate them too, because you train your audience how to interact with your channel. And so if you only post comments that are helpful to everyone, that are professional, that are polite, that other people can learn from and grow from, if those are the only comments you allow to be seeing the light of day in your comment section, that's what you'll get more of. What I see a lot of other YouTubers do is they make the huge mistake of not policing their comment section. And so you'll start to see people kind of get into this vicious cycle where they'll basically be in the comment section, you know, tearing the YouTuber into little tiny bits in their video. And I'm sure you've seen comment sections like this. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I would never want to do this um, as a creator to have a comment section like that. Well, the good news is you don't have to. So it is totally within your control how much of those type of comments you let be in that space. You know, it's it's perfectly fine to have differences of opinion. And I get comments all the time where people disagree with me, but they do it in a kind, polite, professional way that other people can learn from. And that's what we have on our channel. So it's, again, I'm so fortunate in my lovely audience. And again, thank you to all of you so much. You just absolutely are the bright spot in my day. I appreciate you so much. The seventh lesson that I've learned from my year on YouTube is to get really clear on your why. So why are you starting your channel? Is it to share an experience in terms of like a travel adventure that you're going on, share your love for a particular hobby that you enjoy? Maybe you're a professional that you want to share kind of how to and educational advice with people. Maybe it's a vlog. You want to share your personal journey and your level up journey. And those are always so much fun. The list goes on and on and on of different types of YouTube channels out there. But just really think about why are you starting it? Are you starting it to have a passive income stream for yourself down the road when it does start to monetize, for example, too? Maybe all of the above. Maybe you've got some combination of those. But having a solid and clear why will really help you in the future on those days when you've been creating videos for six months and 10 people are watching your videos, nine of whom are family members. And I promise you this happens. So it's okay, but you have to have something that keeps you sustained and keeps you going through those dry months when there's not much going on and you maybe get one comment a month. Um, I've sort of gotten to the point where I'm not obsessively checking my comment section all the time to be like, oh, I got another comment. Um, but it's never going to get old to, I don't care how many subscribers I have. I could have like 5 million subscribers and I don't care. I will still be overjoyed when people leave comments on my channel because you're really being able to interact with other people People. And that communication with the individual on the other side of the screen is really the fun part about all this and be able to kind of hear people's stories. I love in my comments how people share their stories and stuff. So 
Until you get that wonderful subscriber audience like I have, you will not have much going on. And so having a strong why will sustain you. It will also sustain you through phases where you're feeling kind of burnt out. You're kind of wondering why you got on YouTube in the first place and you can't really remember. Or you have a busy month where you couldn't film and you're like, well, I haven't filmed all month, so maybe I'll just give up on the channel. Don't quit. It's okay. You can keep going. But if you have that strong why, that'll sustain you through those kind of dry spells. The eighth lesson that I learned from my year on YouTube is it's really important to stay ultra focused on YouTube. If your goal is to build a big kind of library of digital real estate, if you want to think about it that way of these videos that will eventually monetize and be rather than watch time and things like that, it'll be money in your bank account, right? So you really want to stay focused though on one platform at a time. And I'm assuming since you're watching this video, you're probably pondering starting a YouTube channel. Um, I see people occasionally who will have a big YouTube channel and a big Instagram account and a big TikTok account, and they will just be doing it all themselves. And those are like super burnt out individuals. Usually what you see more is when you see large channels where they have big presences across multiple places is they have a big team in the background where they have an Instagram and TikTok manager, they've got a YouTube you know, manager, they've got video editors, they've got all kinds of different people making the magic happen. So just remember in the beginning, it's just you, I don't want you to burn out. So it's really important to just focus on YouTube and maybe post once a week to Instagram and TikTok, LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many different platforms. I don't really use Facebook at all as part of my brand, but you know, if Facebook's part of your brand, you know, posting to that. Um, but really pick one platform to focus on because that's going to help really maximize your efforts and maximize the quality that you can put into this channel and this platform as opposed to spreading that out thin across a lot of other places in which process you will get spread too thin as well and will increase your likelihood of burning out and giving up. So you don't want to do that. Um, it's really important to, to also think about making what's I think I think it's called evergreen content, if you want to think of it that way, but evergreen content where you are creating stuff that isn't too much bound up in this moment, but is something that maybe in a year or two years, people might still want to watch, might still be relevant. So you want to look at content like that. Obviously, if you're a vlogger, this isn't going to be quite as relevant because people are following your day to day life. But if you're in a type of platform like what I'm or channel like I am where I'm doing education and different topics like this, you want to make sure that you're doing things that are going to be relevant to your audience over the long term because you're building that big library of videos that will eventually start to make you good money over time. My ninth lesson of my year on YouTube is understand your analytics, but don't get hung up on them. So this is a really important thing. There is a lot of data that YouTube gives you about how your videos are performing, how your channel's performing, what your audience demographics are, um, all kinds of different stuff. And you can get totally hung up on this and end up just obsessing over your analytics. And I would encourage you not to because it will take time away from creating content because it's that fine balance of, yes, learn from your analytics and learn how you can create videos that will perform better or more what your audience wants, for example, but also be able to create valuable, high quality content and also take care of yourself so you're not burning out and don't let it consume too much of your time and mental energy. So that's really important as well. And just being able to kind of understand those and I could do an entire, I, I, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in more videos like this about YouTube using YouTube as part of your business and your brand and having that as an income stream, because I'd be very happy to make more videos about kind of what I'm learning. But that's a really important piece of this as well is just not get too obsessed with well, how many views do I have? How many thumbs up do I have? How many thumbs down do I have for that matter? Um, which funny little like insider tip. So the algorithm does not care if people give your video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It just looks at it as like a click. So it doesn't care. So you don't have to get too hung up over if people give your video a thumbs down. And same goes for negative comments. You know, the algorithm doesn't care if somebody leaves you a nasty comment or a nice comment. It's just like, oh, it's a comment. Someone's engaging. And then it, it 
does its magic and you know whatever so it shows your video to more people regardless so anyway there's just a lot to be said about youtube analytics and i won't say it all right now because we do not have time but that is something to really just pay, remember to not um you know get to the point where you're obsessively checking your video performance at the cost of creating videos if that makes sense and then my 10th and final lesson from my year on YouTube is watch your old videos back to improve your future ones. This was something that was kind of uncomfortable for me to do at first, to be honest, because I wasn't that comfortable watching myself talk on camera and it would just feel a little bit awkward. But as I did it, it was really valuable because I could start to pick up on all the times I was using those filler words, just like, um, ah, uh, you know, I realized I was saying that all the time, right? right? So those are things that are really helpful to be able to do to go back and watch. You can also look at little things like how is your lighting doing? Do you need to improve your sound quality or your recording equipment? Um, do you need to say I'm less often? The all, all Just all these different things that you can start to learn and watch. Even, for example, types of what you're going to wear during your videos in terms of style of clothes, color, what suits you best. All these different things are great to be able to look at when you're watching yourself back on camera. And that is a really useful thing to do as well. It's a little uncomfortable at first. I know some people don't like seeing themselves on camera. They don't like listening to their own voice. I hear a lot of people People say, well, I'd be, I'd love to be on YouTube, but I don't like the sound of my own voice. So it's just really a good practice to get used to that and then be able to improve. I try to make each video 1% better than the last one in some little way, tweak a little thing or try something different or change up something about the way I'm presenting, change up something about the thumbnail, just try to kind of continue to level up my videos a little bit at a time. And that's the goal is just to continue to improve on your progress. And then you can go back and look at your old videos in six months or a year and look and see how much better you're doing now, how much you've grown as a YouTuber and as a content creator than when you began. And that's always fun to go back and kind of compare where you started with where you are now. And it's a all just a work in progress. And then I have a bonus for you to approach your journey as a content creator with a sense of humor and a desire to constantly improve and you'll go far. So that is something that's really important too, is just to have a sense of humor about the times that you make mistakes. You will make mistakes. It's okay and then continue to improve as you go on because there, the vast majority of channels never hit a thousand subscribers. So just the fact that you're pondering starting a channel, maybe you've already started one and it's just not getting the growth that you wanted, you're feeling kind of annoyed about that, whatever your situation might be, just know that if you go into this whole process with the best mindset possible, you're going to up your chances so much of being able to outlast 90% of channels. I want to say it's only about 10% of channels that ever get to that thousand subscriber mark. And most of them never reach that and they get burned out and the content creators give up, which I think is a real shame because we all have so much to share with the world. So if you're thinking about starting a channel, just go ahead and get one started. And I will also link in the description below to the course I took, the online course that I took about starting a YouTube channel. Um, I waited until I got it on a sale. It's quite expensive, but they run sales several times a year with this company that runs this course. So I will link to that in the description as well below. And then if spending money on a big course about how to do a YouTube channel isn't in your budget, there are so many videos completely for free all across YouTube about how to start a YouTube channel, how to be a content creator. I'll link to a couple of my favorite channels that share a lot about this down in the description as well with lots of great resources for you completely for free. So that's something to keep in mind. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And again, a huge shout out to my wonderful subscribers. You all are just such a source of joy for me. And I am so grateful for each and every one of you. It's such an honor and a privilege to have you here at the channel. And I learned so much from all of you. And so I look forward to seeing where we go in the year ahead. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again soon in my next video.